everybody welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers this is the first time I'm actually doing a sit down video since reaching 20,000 subscribers thank you so much and as you can tell in the title down below we're going to be talking about some of the books that I have recently read I'm talking about in the last two and a half months so if you watch my uh, channel and you watch my videos and you watch my vlogs and all of that you will know that um, you will pick up on books that I'm reading in between my vlogs here and there but this is where I'm actually going to be sitting down with you with a cup of tea grab your cup of tea because there's a lot of books I'm going to be talking about a lot of books so grab your cup of tea and we're going to talk about the books that I've read in the last two months so excited to have you here if you are new here my name is Kateo and let's get into the video let's get into it so these books are in no order of importance these are the books I've read in the last two and a half months this is a lot of books it's a lot of books it is eight Eight? Yeah, eight books to be uh, exact, and these are the books I read in the last two and a half months. Really great books. Uh, I'm going to rate them as well. There is just one book that I'm not, two books that I'm not going to rate because they are non-fiction books, and I don't typically rate non-fiction books because these are true stories of people's lives and all of that, so I don't typically rate those. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start in no order of how I read them. If you follow my channel and you watch my videos, you'll know the exact order of how I read them. So I'm going to go from the top all the way down. Let's get into it. So the first book, ah, the first book that I picked up was, uh, Karen Slaughter's Pretty Girls. Well, the first book I'm picking up right now. What am I saying? Uh, the first book is Karen Slaughter's Pretty Girls. Now, this is a thriller. It's more of a crime thriller. And it follows the life of, um... Claire and Claire is married to a wealthy man by the name of Paul. Oh my god, my phone. Let me just silence this because it's gonna go off, chap. Um, I'm sorry about that. So Claire is married to a wealthy millionaire, even billionaire, by the name of Paul, and she lives a relatively good life. But the story opens up with something happening. I'm not gonna give it away as to what happens, but something happens between Claire and her husband. Okay, let me just stop. My neighbor's got a new dog, okay? So I think the dog is just, you know, trying to get settled in. So you're gonna hear a lot of like dog noises throughout the video. I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. And I do have to record, so I'm sorry about that. So what basically happens is when Claire was growing up, she, one of her sisters, her older sister disappeared and they never really found out what happened to her. But because of this, um, her relationship with her parents became estranged. Their parents became estranged from one another. It really caused a really big rift in uh, her home life and her family life. Even though she did have a relationship with, she has a relationship, a good relationship with her mother, but her father passed away um, early on. I won't say how he passed away because I feel like it's a big um, uh, uh, point of the story. However, he passed away and they never really found out what happened to their daughter. So book opens, something happens between Claire and her husband and it re ignites the thoughts of her sister what happened and all of that and she decides to actually dig a little bit deeper because there is a case of a girl in her hometown who was also killed um and who was also who has also disappeared i'm sorry who has also disappeared i read this one a while ago so you know my images of it are a little bit fuzzy but wow if i am going to mention to you a dark book this is pretty much top of the list of the darkest books that I've ever read. This is not a book for the faint of heart. There are trigger warnings, hectic. There's trigger warnings for pretty much everything. There's trigger warnings for rape. There's trigger warnings for gore. There's trigger warnings for porn, for child pornography. There's trigger warnings for um, suicide. There's trigger warnings for pretty much everything so this is a very dark book and i really don't recommend it if you're somebody who struggles with things that i've just mentioned and so much more i really do feel like you would need to google 
what else is in here in terms of trigger warnings but let me tell you if there is ever a fast-paced book that i've ever read firstly the crime writing is phenomenal now karen slaughter is known very very much for brilliant crime writing this they, this this chunky book this is like a 400 and something page book the crime writing in this is phenomenal it's not too much following you know the political the police side of the story or whatever but it's crime writing at its best and it's so so good i rated this book a definite five out of five it's fantastic and i really do suggest that you um pick it up if you are not somebody who is easily you know sensitive to things like the trigger warnings that i've mentioned earlier on but a really 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 good book really dark the twists in this book if you're somebody who likes to read thriller novels the twists in this book are insane it's just twist after twist after <gasps> and basically yeah she she begins to learn uh the truth about her sister and but while she does learn what really happened to her sister the connects that she makes and how she finds finds out who and what who was involved sister really really good book so so impressed i gave it a five out of five but a really dark book i do have to stress that it's a dark book so don't read it if you can't handle that kind of content but if you can pick it up you can get it from take a lot you can get it from bargain books and at a really really good price i think i picked it up for 60 bucks or something at bargain books so guys pick it up really good book the next book up is yellow means stay this is an anthology of love stories from africa it's edited by a number of uh authors all well Wazuruki, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, uh, Confidence, Wazurike, and Mun Munachim Ama. So, edited by three authors, but it's, it's stories, um, I'm not sure if it's by these particular authors or by different types of different authors, but it's love story, it's exactly what it says, love stories from all over Africa. So it's an anthology of different types of stories. And I've, I, I liked um, two or three of these. For me, I would definitely rate this one maybe a three out of five. I wasn't too crazy about it. There was a time where I just felt like, okay, there's a lot of stories in here. It's a little bit too much, but I enjoyed the celebration of love in this book. It really reminded me of uh, Bolu Babalola's uh, Love and Color. Oh my gosh, I loved that anthology so, so much. I love those stories. Um, but yes, I really, really enjoyed this one as well. Wow, the dog. Mm. I really, really enjoyed this one as well. And I was a big fan of it. And I really do suggest that you pick it up. So um, if you are somebody who loves uh romance if you love uh romance but you don't like the smutty kind of romance you don't like the oh this is a little bit too much kind of romance <laughs> but you do like to read about celebrating love and celebrating black love as well definitely highly recommend that you pick it up uh but if you're not somebody that's about love then maybe you can give this one a skip um i really enjoyed it um it's really really it talks about you know tender love and forbidden love and it talks about all different types of love between partners i really enjoyed it but i wouldn't say uh, I, I don't know if it's something that i would reread again that kind of thing however the bolu one i would definitely reread again so this one it was okay really enjoyed it pick it up if you want if you don't um the cover of the book however is beautiful it's a picture of the face and hair of a woman but then it's made of flowers do you see that do you see that and then ah, uh, <laughs> if ever there was a book that i put up on my instagram or i put it up on my uh status or twitter or whatever if ever there was a book that solicited the reaction that it got from a lot of you guys it's this one I always share the books that I read online and all of that. 
on my social media and all of that. But this one had so many people in my DM saying, what book is that? I need to pick it up. And I know one of my good friends, Mbali, picked it up as well. It's such a great memoir. Uh, this is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado or Machado. I'm not quite sure you say the surname, but it follows her life and the life of um, it follows her life and a relationship that she had with a very tumultuous and volatile woman. She is lesbian. So in this, it talks about she mixes how um, her life is also, you know, something somewhat of a story you can't really tell whether it's actually her life you know like at the back of your mind that it's her life she's talking about her life and her uh, experiences in this relationship that she had with this woman but at the same time it reads like it's a story there is listen there are very few few books and few writers that I actually really love their writing. Their writing is very, it's very effervescent. It draws you in. It pulls you in. This felt like I was reading a book. This sometimes felt like I was reading a fantasy novel. This sometimes felt like I was reading a romance novel. Sometimes it felt like I was reading, um, not really a thriller, but something like that would keep me in suspense quite a bit because of the volatile relationship that she had with this particular partner. Um, and it was a really, a huge documentation of the harrowing experience that she had with this woman. But the more important thing is that it brings to light abusive relationship within the LGBTQIA plus community. This is not something that is spoken about a lot. She brings it to light and she brings it alive and she's got end notes in this as well where you can actually she 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 links her story along with a book or a movie or you know and she brings them and she fuses them together it is so well written i cannot tell you can't stress enough i'm not gonna rate it but if i could rate it i would give it a six out of five i really would but this is a phenomenal book that talks about really important subjects like abuse in same-sex relationships and how it's not something that is often really discussed and she brings it to the forefront. Um, she casts a critical eye over legal, legal proceedings, fairy tales, Disney villains, and more infusing her character with playfulness and openness absolutely correct that's why i felt like reading this sometimes felt like i was reading a, a, a fantasy novel sometimes felt like i was reading a disney novel it was so good sometimes felt like i was reading a screenplay it was so 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 good oh pick this up if there's ever a book that i would say pick up in the video it's this one The next book I have out is Lock Every Door by Riley Sega. Now, Riley Sega is a well-loved um, thriller author all over the world. His books are loved. I think he's got like four or five books. I think the latest one is Survive the Night. It's, it's, it's five books. Um, for me, this is Lock Every Door, a really, really um, fast-paced thriller. A lot that was going on at the same time. Um, but I really wouldn't rate it a 5 out of 5. At the very most, I would give it... I'm swinging somewhere between 3.5 and, and 4 out of 5. But it was a really good book. So this follows the life of Jules Larson. And Jules is a 24, 25-year-old woman who is so down on her luck. Like, listen, she has just lost her job. She, her, she thought her boyfriend cheated on her because... What do men do? What do men do? Uh, her boyfriend cheated on her and she's really down on her luck and she's trying. So she finds this article in the newspaper where they are looking for a house sitter for this um, really prestigious, but at the same time mysterious building right in the center of New York in Manhattan or something like that. And it's called the Bartholomew. And there's such prestige that's centered around this building because the people who live there are wealthy and people from very affluent backgrounds but she answers this um ad in the newspaper for the sitters and she goes there but now the thing is it seems too good to be true first the money seems too good to be true if i'm just going to be apartment sitting this money is wild right so she goes there 
but now it comes with a catch being a apartment sitter for the Bartholomew comes with a catch she can't speak to any of the people who live in this apartment building she cannot post this apartment building anywhere on her social media she can't talk to anybody about it she can't have people come over to visit her in this apartment building she can't go out and sleep out for the night she has to sleep there every single night creepy right so you're thinking to yourself why the hell why why all these rules right so now the money, the rules, now you want to know what's going on. The twists, so good. Um, yeah, she starts seeing that things are a little bit funny. She starts finding that things are a little bit weird about this apartment building and some of the neighbors. Something feels like it's very ghosty about this apartment building. Really, really, really enjoyable. Um, yeah, but then she, uh, she finds out that one of the apartment sitters that is also enlisted to apartment sit this, some apartments in this building goes missing. And of course, because of that, she decides that, uh-uh, I'm trying to find out what's going on. And whoa, what she does find out is wild, is wild. So I really did enjoy it, but I'm really swinging between three and a half, four out of five. It's not something like Karen Slaughter level, you know what I mean? But it, it was enjoyable. It was a quick read. I think I read it in like two or three days. And yeah, it's got about um, 370 pages. Not so bad. Really, really a quick read. And if you're a thriller lover, definitely do recommend that you pick this one out. The next book out is Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. Another five out of five. First and foremost, let's have a look at this cover. What do you even mean, right? What do you even mean? This is Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. I read this one in one of my vlogs. I was reading this book, but also um, I read it in a very short space of time. I think I read it in three days it's a quite a short book because it's got 191 pages quite a short book a contemporary which follows the life of talia talia is born to uh colombian parents and she's born in colombia and the book opens up with talia having broken out of a somewhat like a detention center in uh colombia and she breaks out of this detention center with the with the ah, i can't talk today with the intent she breaks out of this uh detention center with the intent to get to her father who is in bogota in colombia because her father is waiting for her there with a plane ticket so that she can go to the u.s and join um her mother and her two siblings yes karina to join her mother and karina and i forget the the brother's name but it's a contemporary, it follows her journey, it follows her, um, uh, her journey to getting to her father in Colombia, but at the same time, it's, it's dual time span. So at the same time, it also follows the love story of, um, what are the parents' names? Of Mauro, Mauro and Elena. It follows the love story of Mauro and Elena during the time that they were young, how they met, um, the, the, the difficulties that they had to go through. Uh, Talia is the last born. She is the youngest of the two siblings. And you know, the difficulties that they had to go through and the mother moving to Colombia and the struggles that the father had with trying to get back to Colombia with Talia. Like, it is a beautiful trying to get to America with Talia. I'm so sorry. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tale that is told so symbolically. It's lyrical. It's so beautiful to read. Um, it's easy to read. There isn't any difficulty in reading this book, but oh my gosh, the stories, um, the myths that the, the father shares with Talia, you know, about the snake and about the Commodore, the bird. I think it's the Commodore. It's just so beautiful. Like the stories about the Jaguar and all of that. It shares a lot of tales about um, 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 just Colombian history, the struggles that migrants have to go through when um, a, a, a family or a person is um, trying to escape civil unrest or trying to escape difficulties in their home country, whether it be Colombia or Mexico, and trying to get into the U.S. It talks about that kind of stuff as well. Oh, 
but at the same time it just interweaves it all in a beautiful beautiful love story between Elena and Mauro but also the resilience of the family the difficulties the struggles that they've all had to go through to get to where they are at that point in time the difficulties the struggles of the father the mother um, there are some things that happen in this book, especially with Talia's mother, that might be difficult for some people to read. Um, but really, at its, at its core, it's a 5 out of 5, a beautiful book, a tale of love, of desperation, of resilience, of what a family will do to be together. The lengths that, that they'll go through to be together. Oh, loved it. Definitely going to be in my top 10 of the year. Definitely going to be in my top 10. Another book, we're bringing it back home, local South African. This is when secrets become stories, which is edited by Sue Nyati. This book is a nonfiction. I'm not going to rate it, but if I would, I would give it a 5 out of 5. But that's how brilliant it is. This book brings to the forefront the harrowing tales, accounts of the women who write the stories in these books, the women who have who have uh, written, talked about the stories in their, their stories, their journeys, their experiences in this book with regards to gender-based violence. Now we're talking about gender-based violence, financial abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, any kind of abuse that is imparted on women by men in a patriarchal society and how it's impacted them and affected their lives and this was so difficult to read and i read this book at a time when there were the lootings and and the craziness that was happening in south africa so it was really a difficult time in the country and i went and i read a really heavy book again at that time but really important for south africa because we all know and the statistics and whatever, South Africa is a really dangerous place to live if you are a woman. It's, 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 I just, I hate that I say that, but the stats, the stats are the facts, okay? Um, so, uh, it talks about the, the really, really, really terrifying, terrifying, um, stories and accounts by all the women that have been um, asked to, 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 to write for this book. Um, you know, one of my favorite lines is from the, the story by Kelly and Sarah, and it says, it says the end of the, the short story says, um, it'll dawn on you one day, years from now, that this isn't what you thought it was, that you didn't give consent, you didn't show up late at night, you knew he was drunk. You kissed him, but you still said no. The story will sit silent as part of a dark night that you don't want to talk about for so many reasons, except one day when you consent to having it heard. I mean, ooh, I really enjoyed this one. So I really do implore you to pick it up if you are South African, if you are not South African, if you are African, if you are European, if you're American, if you're from the South America, Asians, I, I don't care. Just pick up this book because you will be standing in the fight against gender-based violence, especially in this country. So the last book that I have here is a book that I finished this morning in bed. I finished it this morning and wow, <laughs> symbolic, idyllic, incredible writing. This is under the Udala or Udala trees by Chinelo Oparanta. That's what it looks like. I finished it this morning. I absolutely, absolutely loved this book. This book follows the life of Ijoma, who grows up in a small town in Nigeria called Ojoto. And um, she grows up a really good childhood with her parents, uh, but when she is around 11 or so, um, the Nigerian civil war, civil unrest happens in Nigeria. Um, a war between the uh, Biafra people and the houses, if I'm not mistaken, if you're Nigerian and you're watching this, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm trying to remember, around the 1968 time period, and a civil unrest is happening, a war is happening, and 
the war then comes to her town of Ojoto and yeah there's bombings there's all of that and her father passes away in this in this time and this changes the trajectory of Ijeoma's life forever so around this time of course she's now left with her mother and her mother has to make some difficult decisions um of which i won't say what they are however it follows it's a love story between two women Ijeoma and amina Ijeoma meets amina while she's young a lot of things happen she's staying at um uh, uh, a friend of her mother's and Amina also joins this family a lot of things happen you follow the life of Ijeoma but you follow the life of Ijeoma trying to find her identity and the and and her sexuality and trying to understand what it is but you follow it in a time where sexuality between same-sex relationships is seen as an abomination so now you're seeing it as no the older generation of that time are seeing it as an abomination and we are going to beat it out of you we are going to pray for you you are going to turn back to the lord it's got a whole lot of religious patriarchy in it and all of that really really difficult to read because there's a lot of bible phrases you know her mother tries to get her into um reading the bible every day and getting her into stories that come from the bible that will make her see that same sex guys whew, really really hard to read really really harrowing and sad in, in in so many parts because she is fighting herself trying to make her mother happy trying to make everybody around her happy except herself but also at some points succumbing to who she is and succumbing to her sexuality and it is just ah it ended on such a hopeful note and the epilogue which extends and makes us see a little bit into the future of her life was just incredible it ends on a really beautiful note but it is very hard to read in certain parts um you just i i felt a huge connection to idioma um as somebody who is just bisexual in my sexuality i just felt a huge connection to this woman and 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 her struggles with her sexuality and her struggles with you know trying to accept who she is but at the same time not you know asking god to show her the way if she is wrong for feeling what she feels or being who she is if this is wrong show me a sign so that i can figure it out and yo really difficult but a beautiful book nonetheless and i really do think this is another one that I would implore you to pick up. Implore you to pick up. When Secrets Become Stories, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, uh, and this one. The other ones you can pick up in your own time, but definitely. Yeah. So that is it from me with the books that I have read in the last two and a half months or so. This brings the tally of the books that I've read up to 20. Uh, I'm trying to read between 37 and 39 books before the end of the year. So I'm pretty good. If I can, we're in the middle of August now. If I can read another two books, I, I could pretty much hit this target proper. By the end of december so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video um tell me if you've read some of these books if you have which ones have you read tell me which ones you've liked down below if you haven't which ones are you feeling like picking up let me know i would really love to know um but for now i'm gonna go i feel like i've been speaking for so long thank you for 20k please do subscribe if you want to see more of this content and i'll see you in the next video until then sayonara